In this video, we'll learn how to update the firmware on an Excel series OCS controller. This same process is also used for the HEX5 Micro OCS. Whether you are upgrading firmware or reverting back to an older version of firmware, the process is the same. The first thing we'll do is go to hornerautomation.com to download the firmware. On a small screen such as I'm using now, click on the menu icon on the right. Then click support, then downloads, and then finally click on controller firmware. For this demonstration, I chose to use an XL4 controller. So I'll scroll down to the XL series controllers, and then I'll expand the XL4 menu. Now we can see that there are several different versions of firmware available for download. We can also see that release notes are available for download. The release notes will describe what's new in this version of firmware. I'll select 15.40 to download. And you can see that it's downloading at the bottom of the browser, which is typical for most browsers. Before we leave the website, we also want to find the firmware update manual, which outlines the steps we are taking in this video. Again, I'll click on the menu icon and support. This time I'm going to click on documentation and sales literature. I'll scroll down and look for the search field on the right and simply type firmware. This narrow down, narrows down the search field. And now I can see the application guide for updating firmware on an OCS, manual 1011. Clicking on the link opens the manual in your browser. You can use it right here from the browser or you can download it to be used later at your convenience. Now that the download is completed, I'll move the files into an accessible location on my hard drive. So we're gonna show this is, this is the way that I do it. Uh, there's different ways this can be done. I typically show the download in the folder. And then I will drag the firmware zip file onto my desktop. With the Excel series controllers and X5 controller, the firmware update is done from removable media, which is a micro SD card or a USB thumb drive. These controllers do not use the firmware update wizard found in Seascape. The next step is to copy the files we downloaded onto the removable media. I will typically move the entire zip file onto the micro SD card or the USB drive. In this case, I'm using a micro SD card, uh, drive letter D. Now that I have the firmware zip file placed on my micro SD card, I'm going to extract this all here in this folder. It is important to know that the controller looks at the root directory for the firmware files. So we want to place the files in the root directory of the micro SD card. They cannot be in a folder as that changes the path of the files and the controller will not be able to see them. So as we can see right now on the root directory, all my firmware files are in a folder, which is not what we want. So I will go into that folder. I will do a control A to select all. And then control X to cut. Or I can right click and cut. Go back up to the root directory. And paste the files. Now we see that the firmware files, XL4E, the XLCFG, XL Firm, 
XL init, XL kern are now all on the root directory of the micro SD card. The card is now ready to be taken from the PC and installed into our XL4 to perform the firmware update. I've placed the micro SD card in the slot on top of the unit. But before we do a firmware update, uh, there's some steps that we want to take first. I'm going to press on the system key and we're going to arrow down to view status and arrow down to the bottom of the page and we can see that the firmware revision is 15.34 the init rd is 1.18 and the os version is 2.6.35.74 it's important to uh, keep these files as a matched set so anytime we're updating firmware or changing firmware we want to make sure that the file revisions that all go with each other uh, end up showing up the right way here in the status. We also want to go down to removable media and here we can just verify that all of the files uh, that we put on the micro SD are in, in fact showing up. If we don't see the files here, we need to go back to previous steps and ensure that the uh, files are getting placed onto the micro SD card. Uh, and finally, I'm going to clone the unit. This is not required to do a firmware update, but it might save you some steps. I'm going to clone the unit. Make a clone. Are you sure? Yes. What this is going to do is save the program and all of the registered data onto the micro SD card. Success on make clone operation. So we'll press OK there and we'll escape out of here. In order to do a firmware update, we're going to hold on the system button for a few seconds. And from here we get the boot installer screen. Once we have the boot installer screen loaded, you'll see that you have the options to update firmware, update FPGA, or install bootloader. Uh, we always want to do install bootloader here. If we update just the firmware or just the FPGA, we run into the risk of having operating system file mismatches, which can in some cases result in some unpredictable behavior. This is why I mentioned previously that we wanted to keep those operating system file revisions as a matched set. So if we install bootloader, that's going to do everything. It installs the init rev RD, it installs the operating system, as well as the firmware. The update will take about one minute. And once that has completed, we'll cycle power to the unit. Operation has completed, and we will cycle power to the unit. It's important to note that anytime we do a firmware update, the user program, the user downloadable program, is erased. So all of the screens, all of the program logic, all of the configuration, and importantly, all of the register data is completely erased. Uh, so the unit is now uh, at somewhat of a factory default. So now we're going to go into the system menu. We'll see that the OK and the run LEDs are off. The unit has failed the self-test. That's normal because there's no configuration in the unit right now, so we expect it to fail the self-test. We're going to go to status and hit enter, and we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And now we see that our firmware has been updated. We have 15.40 there now. The init RD rev has been updated to 1.22. The operating system version of 2.6.35.74 is actually still the same as it was before. Uh, that's what we expect to see when going from firmware 15.34 to 15.40. In other cases, that OS version might change. And as a last step, we're going to go to our clone unit feature. And we're going
going to load clone. That puts our original program back into the unit. And there you have it. That is the firmware update for the XL series controller and the HEX5 series OCS.